Welcome back. Today I have a really fun video for you. Last week we published a video showing how to make this little uh, 3D printed print in place maker coin thingy in both Fusion 360 and FreeCAD. Uh, one of the members of the community stepped up and taught us how to do it in FreeCAD. I showed how to do it in Fusion 360. We published that video and someone else has now stepped up and volunteered to show us how to do the exact same thing in OpenSCAD, which is really cool. If you want to actually join in this, maybe you could submit a video of how to do this in another package. There are a bunch of CAD packages out there and I think it's really cool to be building the exact same file with the same measurements and everything to show how it's done in each of them. I'd love to see Design Spark or SolidWorks or any of these other packages. Reach out, leave a comment if you would like to contribute a video doing it. So let me uh, go ahead and pass this over. This is Carlo. He's an awesome guy. I've known him for a few years off and on. Uh, he actually runs a Maker Faire. I'll let him introduce himself and then we'll hop right into the tutorial. My name is Carlo. I'm the manager of this uh, Fab Lab in a research institution in Trieste, Italy. And I'm also organizer of uh, Trieste Maker Faire here in my town. And I'm especially interested in OpenSCAD as a free open source uh, uh, CAD tool because I love coding and OpenSCAD is a strange type of CAD. You only type commands on the keyboard, don't need to use a mouse and uh, you can create 3D objects. So I want to make this uh, maker coin with OpenSCAD. The interface of OpenSCAD is quite simple. There are three parts in the window. On the left, you have uh, the text editor, when you can write your, your program, and also comments, for example, with double slash. Here on the right, you have the graphical output, the preview of what you are creating. And here on the bottom, there is a small uh, window for the console, error messages, basically, when you mistype a command. Syntax for OpenSCAD is very similar to a basic uh, version of C language, or uh, more probably more used uh, for our makers, uh, Arduino IDE. Um, so it's almost the same command. You have uh, if condition, you have loops for, um, you have all the usual stuff for programming language, but uh, also graphical primitives for 3D objects like the cube, a sphere, um, a cylinder, or even 2D object like uh, circle, square, and things like that. And also transformation. Uh, you can scale, you can translate, uh, you can rotate uh, your object, you can combine them together with different uh, Boolean uh, combination. So let's start uh, with the first approximation. This is what I do usually when I have to write uh, um, code for a new object. Let's make a, uh, our coin. Our coin is basically a cylinder, right? So cylinder has to value, uh, I don't know, the radius and the height. If I execute this, what I get is a nice preview of my cylinder. Uh, we discuss that the reason why it's not very good, the border is a sort of a, an approximation of a real cylinder. But uh, first things I want to do is uh, I want to define variables for the, those values. I don't want to use uh, numerical values in the code because it makes it difficult then to change them. You can repeat the same value in multiple um, instances and uh, it's much, much easier and uh, less prone to error if you define variables. So first of all, you have to mm, define what we want to make. Our coin will be made by two parts, the external rim and the internal hub. Let's start with external rim. So I want to define an external rim radius. I use shorter name for variables, make it faster to type them. External radius equal to, uh, if I remember right, is 40 millimeter of diameter, so radius is divided by two. And I have to um, end each command line with a semicolon. And I can also add a com uh, comment to, for example, remember to myself that values are in millimeter. And also how tall is my coin? Uh, 10 millimeter, right? So my cylinder will be with a radius of external radius and height equal to how tall is the cylinder. Okay. As I told you before, the approximation is not really very good. There is a reason. OpenSCAD uh, does not use uh, curves for uh, rendering and generating the, the, surf the, the surfaces. It uses uh, stride segments. And the uh, segments 
well, according to how many segments you can you use to make up a, a circle or a cylinder, uh, the approximation will be worse or better. In this case, there is a system variable called fragment number that allow you to define a different number than the default. The uh, default, I think, is 20 or 32 or something like that. If I use 100, my cylinder will look better. It's, it looks like, like a real cylinder. Well, you still see some, some approximation, but the problem with a uh, high number of fragments is that it makes things uh, a little bit slower. So let's, let's keep it uh, uh, a lower value. It's, it's enough for now. Well, maybe not 30, let's say 50. Okay, our first approximation is this cylinder, but our coin is not really a cylinder. Um, well, we need to add the chamfer, right? And uh, the chamfer, chamfer is a cut on the edge, on the top surface and the bottom surface of the cylinder, a cut by a, at the angle of 45 degrees. So let's define the external chamfer. Well, chamfer is too long, probably it's called just C-A-H-A. Equal to two millimeter, if I remember correctly, uh, was the value used by Caleb. So two millimeter of chamfer is, means that we have to remove two millimeter, uh, but the cut is a diagonal. Um, so instead of cutting, instead of removing part from this cylinder, it's possible to do it. Of course, we can make a difference between shapes and so. On. But uh, in my opinion, it will be easier for us to compose our coin by using a conical part on the bottom then a stride cylinder, and then another conical part on top, all, um, say, piled up together. So the first cylinder will not be a cylinder, will be a truncated conus, right? A conical shape is defined by two different radiuses instead of one single radius. The first radius, well, is smaller than the real radius of the cylinder, will be the radius minus the chamfer. While a second radius, the, the top one, will just be uh, the, the normal radius. So if I do this, and, uh, and uh, the height is not 10 millimeter anymore, is the height of the, the chamfer, right? Uh, 45 degrees means that if you remove two millimeter from the side, you also remove two millimeter uh, in height. So this is what I expect to see is the bottom part of my coin, exactly this, a uh, truncated uh, conical shape. Now I can add second cylinder that will make the central part of the coin. This is a real cylinder, so it's straight, one single radius, external radius. Uh, it is just the, the, well, how much it is, is the, the total height minus two times the chamfer, right? Because we remove one chamfer from the bottom, one chamfer size from the top. Now, if I generate this, uh, well, there is a, okay, uh, I mistyped a variable, external radius is an underscore instead of the minus, hyphen. Okay, if I do this, uh, as you see, the second cylinder is just uh, superimposed to the first one. I have to move it a little bit up. I have to translate vertically our cylinder, and the command is translate, and uh, how much in all different, uh, along different axes, I have to use a vector with three values. Uh, I don't want to translate on X, I don't want to translate on Y axis, I want only translation on the Z axis, vertical. And I will translate it up of an amount that is equal to the chamfer, right? So this should make it. In fact, now I have a central part on top of the uh, bottom the chamfered uh, segment. And a third one. A third one is very similar to the first one, so let me just copy and paste the third cylinder, but it will be, of course, translated up again, so let's add a translation. Uh, that will not be the, the chamfer, but will be the total height minus the chamfer. So I'm going, I'm starting from the top and removing the chamfer. And this uh, um, conic shape is just like the previous one, but uh, reversed. So I have the first radius is, is the big one, is the full radius, while this, the top one is the radius minus chamfer. So let's see what's happened. Okay, now I have all three parts and this look, looks almost like my coin. I can, I can again see if it's better with uh, more resolution. 
Okay, uh, let's add our nice um, ridges on the edge. Um, so we have to cut out the ridge. A ridge has uh, also some, some parameters. Uh, well, the height is the same, but uh, we have a radius for the ridge. So ridge radius equal, well, actually it's the same value of the chamfer, and it is by definition, I mean, I don't want to use a different number for that because they will look very ugly. So let's just put the, this variable equal to the previous variable, external chamfer. Mm, so I'm sure that the two numbers are, are always the same. And uh, well, how many ridges I want to use? Let's put a ridge number that if I remember correctly is 24. And let's see what's happening. So I have now to make a difference. But before making a difference, I want to treat this um, this combination of three cylinders as a single uh, object. So I will make a union of the three cylinder with common union and then closing everything in, in curly brackets. And I can, if I'm good enough in coding, I can also add a little bit of uh, uh, spaces just to uh, make a better um, view of the code, a logical view of the code. Well, formatting is important when you when you write a lot of code. So, okay, now I, I didn't do anything. I just made a union, but now I want to make a difference. I want to cut something a uh, difference. I want to cut a part out of this uh, um, uh, shape. So difference will take two inputs. One volume, that is our union of three cylinder as a single item, and then other, other things that we can cut out of the first item. In this case, our ridge. Uh, ridge is also a cylinder with a radius equal to ridge radius and uh, this always the same height of the coin. If I do this, what I will get is, uh, okay, well, a ridge is cut out from the, the coin, but in the center. I have to move it on the right place on the side. So I will do a translate, but this time, instead of vertically, I want to translate horizontally. So I will use uh, Translation, for example, on the x-axis. Uh, by how much? Well, uh, by definition, I guess, the ridge has to be centered in, on the external edge, so it's just external radius. And then zero on y-axis and zero on z-axis. So now I have a ridge in the right position. I want to multiply it and, and uh, uh, spread them around the, the circumference. So I will use a loop. I will use a for loop and I will enclose my ridge in the for loop. And let's just use some nice indentation for that. Uh, as in all languages, uh, loop as a vari loop variable. Uh, as per tradition, let's call it uh, just uh, um, i. i equal to a series of numbers. I want to go from 1 I will still use a syntax very similar to the vector, but this is a generated vector. It goes from one to, um, I use column, one step one to the maximum value of uh, ridge number. Uh, ridge number. Okay. So now I can generate a certain amount of, of ridges, but I have to rotate them. So just put rotate command before the translate. Um, so the cylinder will be created, will be the ridge will be made as a cylinder. It will be translated on the x-axis and then it will be rotated around a rotation axis. I can also use a vector here to express which one is the axis I want to rotate around. Not the x-axis, not the y-axis, but the the z-axis and the amount of rotation. This is one degree. Uh, the amount is expressed in degrees. 360 will be a full rotation. I want to rotate each ridge of how much, how many degrees? Well, is 360 divided by uh, the amount of ridges, the number of ridges. So ridge number. 
this will uh, rotate one of course uh, one ridge of this amount but then the second has to be the double and the three times this amount so i just multiplied everything by my loop variable so i times 360 divided by ridge number let's see what's happened okay i got all my ridges it's very easy now to change the number it's just a parameter i want 20 instead of 24 uh, of course there are limitations if i put a larger number like i don't know 40 uh, they will overlap and the shape will not be so nice anymore let's keep the values suggested by caleb so 24. this is the first approximation of our external uh, rim i can now make the hole in in the center and then create the hub that will fit this hole but they are basically the same shape um, so instead of writing two times uh, all the codes that is needed i can just make one single uh, it's called module one function let's say one subroutine in all languages but in in um, open they are called modules that create the hub that has almost the same shape as the hole uh, how you do that you use a command called module and uh, by the way i can even create a module for the external rim that will help me later on so let, let's do it now let's define all the code that we already made all those lines of code as a module we give it a name so external rim with some parameters there's no need for parameters in this moment and enclose everything between two curly brackets as you see when you select one bracket the, uh, the closing one is also automatically selected for you so you can see what what where are the the boundaries of your your code so my uh, module now if i execute this code you will see something strange everything disappears because the module is just a definition i'm not using this module i'm just defining the module if i want to see what the module looks like i have to call it and to call a module just i type the name like any other commands so now i'm calling this module that i just defined there's no need to define it before calling uh, definition of module can be at the end of the file is no problem and now my module is also displayed okay uh, so let's do now the internal hub part so let's define let's define it as a module because i will reuse it at least two times so the module will let's call it internal hub and brackets so it's a very similar things um I can use union of multiple cylinders. Let's start with the one on, on the bottom. Actually, they work almost like the external rim, but uh, the chamfer that is used in the internal hub is sort of opposite because we are chamfering the rim, we are not chamfering the hub. The hub is the negative of the chamfer. So uh, the final result is just that um, uh, it will be um, reversed let's let's do it let's define our variables as well um, so internal radius uh, i suppose the diameter was 25 millimeter we want a radius because it's easier for us so 25 divided by 2 millimeter and uh, also we have an internal chamfer value how much was the internal chamfer i think it was 4 millimeter double of the external one so we have a radius we have a chamfer let's write our first cylinder uh, so this is a conical shape truncated cone so it has two radiuses r1 and r2 uh, before we used the uh, external radius minus the chamfer as r1 but in this case is reverse so it's just the internal radius so the bigger one and the, and the top radius is the radius minus the chamfer minus internal chamfer and we are always using the same amount of uh, height that is uh, how tall is our coin okay uh, i want to see what is happening so i have to comment out my external rim and i want to see the internal hub so i have to call this module that i just defined and see what's happened yes uh, okay of course i made a mistake you see it's too tall 
the height is not how tall is the coin, it's just how big is the chamfer, as it was before, so internal chamfer. Okay, now we understand what is happening, right? The second cylinder is exactly like it was before. It's a real cylinder, just one single radius, that is uh, internal radius minus chamfer. Uh, height is, uh, well, this is the total height, tall minus twice the chamfer. And, and then we have to translate it. Um, so translate again on the on the vertical axis so 0 for x 0 for y and we uh, raise it up of an amount equal to the chamfer and then we have a third cylinder well i can just copy the first one actually but we like we did before we will reverse uh, the radiuses we will invert the two radiuses so the first one will be radius minus chamfer and the second one will be r2 will be the radius the full radius and the height will be the chamfer and i have to translate again let's copy the translation command it's much easier than type it again but this time instead of translating up of the chamfer value we have to translate up the total value minus the chamfer and let's see what's happening okay First cylinder on the bottom, the central part, and the uh, third part on the top. This is our hub. Now, I want to use it again to make the hole, but the hole and the hub, they are slightly different. There is a small offset of uh, two tenths of millimeter. So let's uh, um, use this module with one additional trick. Let's use it with a, uh, an internal variable. Let's call radius. So the radius that we are going to use for this hub is not uh, the variable that we define. It's something that we have to pass to the module name when we call the module. So let's use red instead of internal radius. Um, I can change it by hand. So I will not use internal radius. I will use radius also here and also here. Okay. If I do this, uh, well, there is no default. So if I call now the value, uh, if I call the module without any value, it will not work. It will give a value of zero or one. I have to put a default. So let's use radius equal internal radius as default. If I call it without any parameter, it will use internal radius. If I call it with a different parameter, I don't know, 40, it will make something different. So I can pass uh, the variable every time I call the module with different values. Okay, now the rim is done and I can use actually the same things to make the hole inside the external rim. External rim, remember it was, uh, let's, let's comment out the internal part and let's see again the external rim, this one. Uh, is a different or, or is already a difference between the three cylinders and the ridges. Uh, the difference command can actually handle more than one uh, um, input. The first is always the volume you start from, but then you can remove, you can delete, you can cut out from this many other values. So not just the ridges. So we are, say the first things here, we are cutting the ridges, but then we can remove the central part and uh, and let's just do it simply by calling the internal hub module so we will make a hole equal to the internal hub okay like this but uh, well there's some artifacts because um, it's the way it uh, it is rendered by OpenSCAD uh, when two surfaces are just uh, barely touching each other, uh, you see this strange uh, shade instead of a clean hole. But it's just a problem with the preview. The final rendering will show you the perfect uh, shape. Uh, there is one little thing we have to, to do. Uh, we have to account for an offset. Uh, the dimension of the hole should be a little bit bigger than the hub. As you see, now I'm calculating the, the real rendering. It takes some time. Uh, even if machine is quite uh, capable, um, 
the final generation is, is a little bit slower than the preview. Okay, this is what I'm doing. But uh, um, I want to change actually the the, um, the value of the radius of the internal uh, hub. I want to add an offset. So let's um, define an offset variable equal. It was two tenth of millimeter. It can be le more or less uh, according to how good is your printer. If you want to account for tolerance uh, when you print. So 0 0.2 millimeter was the value used before. And uh, now the hole we are um, making, we use a radius that is equal to the hub radius, internal radius, and the hole is bigger than the hub, plus offset. So it's just a little bit more than what was before. And I can also, well, and I can make, uh, let's say to make a faster preview, let's use less uh, fragments. It will be a little bit faster. So this will be the external rim minus the increased version of the hub, the enlarged version of the hub by 0.2 millimeter. Uh, since I'm only changing the radiuses, everything else is the same. So I'm just offsetting every dimension uh, radially. So I'm exactly doing the same things that uh, Caleb was doing with with, uh, with uh, Fusion. And I can see if I want the combination of the two parts. Okay, this is how they looks like when you combine them together. This is a low resolution preview of it. And uh, well, you can make even one um, transparent if you want and see what is happening inside but okay this is uh, i think this is uh, the final output let's uh, let's use a larger value for uh, the rendering and um, i think we can finish here our part is ready we got uh, two modules defined one for the external rim one for the internal hub as you see, the total amount of code is really maybe 20 lines, if you don't count the empty lines. And, uh, well, by changing the values you assign to the variables, you can change the shape, you can change uh, whatever you want. Okay, I think we finish. Thank you and goodbye.